hello, my name is Madeline Yanni. I'm a botanical craft instructor here at the New York Botanical Garden. The Continuing Education Department offers a wide range of botanical crafts that can be made here. Here are some of the samples that you can learn in one of our classes. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a tabletop centerpiece. This is an inexpensive way to have a centerpiece that can be used all year round. I'm going to show you how to interchange each from season to season so you can save money and still have an elegant centerpiece for your table. First, we need to go over our materials that we're going to be using for this craft. We have seeded eucalyptus that is preserved and dyed. We have sesame, sesame bloom that is just preserved and kept at its natural cover, color. And a 14 inch grapevine wreath. We also have mini lotus pods that are dried and they're stem free. Then we have parchment flowers. We're using parchment flowers, which are paper flowers, because regular dried roses are too fragile and we want this centerpiece to last throughout the whole year. So first you need to pick out your wreath. This is a 14 inch grapevine wreath and what I like to do is pick out the side that is the flattest. And what I mean by that is the side that's not going to be too wobbly on the table. And as you see, this side works. So what we're going to do is lay this on a tabletop easel. The reason I'm using a tabletop easel is because I rather look at what I'm doing than look above it. So first thing we're going to use are seeded eucalyptus. And what I like to do is use pieces that are about two inches long. What we're going to use to secure them in is a glue gun. Um, please read the instructions before you use your glue gun. They are very hot and I don't want anyone to burn their fingers. What you're going to do is just add a little piece, a little bit of the glue, and you're sticking it right into the grapevine wreath. What I would like you to do is to make sure you glue these from side to side. The reason we're gluing them from side to side is to keep the wreath balanced and we're going in one direction throughout the whole wreath. And as you keep doing this, your wreath should look like this. Once we are done with this, we're going to start on our next material, which is the sesame bloom. The sesame bloom, again, we're going to use pieces that are about an inch, inch and a half, and we're cutting just a little bit of it at a time. Now when you glue this in, we're going to glue them in in bunches. So I just want everyone to hold them. I bend the stems a little bit. Just add a little bit of glue and stick it in. This we're going to do from side to side. We're going to go from here to there and I will show you. And right before you get to the end, your wreath should look like this. And as you see, we kept it going from side to side. And when you get to the end, just make sure it lines up. And once we're all done with your sesame seed bloom, you're going to start with your parchment roses. All of these just need to be cut about two inches. And when you place them, I like to place them before I glue them just to make sure I like where they are. So you just stick these in simply. And then once you do this all the way around, you're just going to put a little piece, a little bit of glue just on the end and it will hold them all right in place. Once you're done with that, you're going to take the buds and there should be one bud per rose. Again, you're going to just cut part of the wire off at this point, you could put a little bit of glue and you stick these right in to hold it. And you will be doing this all throughout the wreath. So once you're done with putting your parchment roses and the parchment buds, 
your wreath should look like this. Then our next step is just to add the lotus pods. Lotus pods are fairly easy to add. What you do is you just rip the back off. You just add some glue and then you just stick them all around. So now we're going to add the candles. I'm going to show you how this wreath could be interchangeable from season to season. What I like to do is add a plate underneath the wreath. The first one we're going to do, since fall is our first holiday of the season, I'm going to show you what you can do. You can add any type of candles and you can add some wheat and place them in. And what I like to do is you can, we do not glue these in because we are changing them from season to season. And you can add them on a pick, so you stick them in like so, and you have your fall centerpiece. Now with The next season, what you can do is you can change the wreath and put it on a cake plate. You can just simply add gold candles and you can wrap some cinnamon up. And the cinnamon just gets laid on here. And now you have your a wreath for the holiday. And now we're going to change this to the spring season. And we can use a terracotta pot also, the bottom of one, to hold the candles. And this is quite simple. You get some lavender candles and you have some lavender sprigs. What I like to do is just tie some little ribbon around it just to make it a little more festive. And I just add these all around. And this is for the spring season. Now for our final season of summer, what we're going to do is add some seashells. And I like to use white candles and add some shells. You just put a little glue at the end of the stick and you put the glue right in there. And these go in all around. And with this, it does not matter how many shells you use. And this completes the final season that you, of what you can do with your wreath. Now that we are finished with our botanical, our first botanical craft project here, a tabletop wreath, I'm Madeline Yanni, and I would like to thank you again for taking time out to create this with me, and I look forward to meeting you at the next botanical craft class. You may look on the New York Botanical Garden website under Continuing Education Department to find out further information about future botanical craft classes. Thank you.